lecture we will address on the maximizing the desired product in bilateral reactions okay and maximizing desired product for two reactants uh, and then we also look into maximizing the desired product in series reaction before that uh, we have already looked into this particular exercise which is about maximizing desired product for one reactant and we know that there are two main key factors in order for us to determine uh, uh, to play around so that we can improve the selectivity of the desired product the first one is the concentration hence it leads to the type of reactor that we should choose and the second one is the temperature which probably it always depends on the activation energy for each particular reaction now we are going to consider if there are two reactants okay that uh, reacted together and it produce one is desired reaction and one is undesired reaction if we conclude again the rate loss then we're gonna have that rd equals to k1 cr ca alpha 1 cb beta 1 and ru for the undesired reaction the rate of reaction is k2 ca alpha 2 cb beta 2 if we rearrange the equation in terms of selectivity this is instantaneous selectivity the instantaneous selectivity rd divided by ru and we rearrange that we're going to get this particular term which is k1 over k2 ca alpha 1 minus alpha 2 cb beta 1 minus beta 2 <coughs> before we proceed with the um, how we're going to look into the condition or aspects or how we're going to improve the selectivity of the desired product uh, we like to introduce different types of reactors what type of reactors and why do we use this particular reactors if you look at the first thing here is basically yes we have a CSTR which has been introduced to you before where A, a and B goes together straight away to the CSTR and instantaneously it is being discharged out and we know that once it comes into the CSTR then basically the concentration at this particular point is the same as what you got at the uh, exit point C, CBE and CAE uh, the next one is tubular reactor so you know that along the length of the tubular reactor the concentration of A and B is dropping progressively until finally you will get the CAE here and CBE here the third one is batch reactor okay the basically you before you start the reactor you put A and you put B inside and then you close the lid and then you supply the temperature and then it reacts until certain time and then you stop and you take out the products the next one that we have to know is semi-batch reactor where basically one is where we have pure A initially and another one is where we have pure B initially so before we react we put A or we put B and then uh, slowly when the reaction started we put B or A slowly inside the reactor so this is called a semi-batch reactor the next reactor that um, we have to know is the tubular reactor with side streams okay so this is the case where for example A only goes to the main uh, inlet feed okay but then B is apart from going to the main inlet feed it also being supplied at different length of the 
flow reactor. This is the same case here where B is supplied at the main feed flow and A is supplied side stream. Another scenario is the tubular reactor with recycle where basically you have A and B coming into the flow reactor and then some part of it is being recycled and you can manipulate the ratio of the recycle here. The other one is basically you can have a series of small CSTR where for example like A is being put here in the only in the first reactor but B is supplied in the different side stream and this particular CSTR in series it behaves similarly with the tubular reactor with side streams. Now we're going to look into maximizing selectivity for two reactants. So we have for the parallel reactions, A plus B goes to D. And A plus B goes to U. And uh, you have the rate of reaction for the desired and the undesired. So consider all possible combination of reaction orders and select the best reaction scheme that will maximize the production of D, the desired product. We're going to look into four case. Okay. So the first case is if let's say alpha 1 bigger than alpha 2, beta 1 is bigger than beta 2. Case 2 is alpha 1 is bigger than alpha 2 but beta 1 is less than beta 2. Case 3 is alpha 1 is less than alpha 2, beta 1 is less than beta 2. And case 4 is alpha 1 less than alpha 2, beta 1 is bigger than beta 2. So let's move to one case, the case 1. So if the case where alpha 1 is bigger than alpha 2, beta 1 is bigger than beta 2, both will give you a positive constant. So if this is positive and this is positive, it will increase the rate of reaction for the desired product. Hence, it will give high selectivity. So, in order for you to get a high selectivity, you need to operate at high concentration for both A and both B. And thus, the option of your reactor are PFR or batch reactors. If it being used at in gas phase, then you should use high pressure, okay, and then you reduce the inerts. This is uh, the case for case one. If we move to case two, in this particular case, uh, if we minus alpha one minus alpha two, then you get positive, but when you minus beta 1 minus bet beta 1 minus beta 2 you'll get negative constant so um, but then when you rearrange back you're gonna have something terms which look like this and then it can be shown here that you need to operate at high CA but for CB if you operate at high CB then it will uh, give you high reaction rate for the undesired product so you need to operate at low cb therefore the type of reactor that you can use is semi batch reactor which b is fed slowly in large a okay so for example like you have a here initially you have a and you supply slowly the b concentration of b you can also have a membrane reactor where basically you have the mainstream as A. Okay. This is A coming in. And B will come in as a side stream. Okay. Because B will be supplied at so the concentration of B is gonna be small when it has a side stream. If uh, we can also use CSTR in series 
where basically only A in the first reactor and the concentration of B is supplied in uh, each reactor. Okay. So that is for the case uh, 2. For case 3, both alpha 1 and both beta 1, when it's minus with alpha 2 and beta 2, it will give negative value. Therefore, in order for you to maximize the selectivity, you need to operate at low concentration of A and low concentration of B. The only option that you have here is CSTR, okay, where basically you, this is the CSTR. So you put in A and B straight away. Once it goes to the reactor, then it automatically drops its concentration to the low concentration. You can also use tubular reactor with large recycle ratio. Okay. And you can also use feed diluted with inerts as well as low pressure for the gas phase reaction. For case 4, this is the case where alpha 1 is less than alpha 2, beta 1 is bigger than beta 2. So now you have to operate with low concentration of A and high concentration of B. So you can have a semi batch reactor, membrane reactor, which where you have mainstream as B, side stream as A, and you can also have CSTR in series. So um, that's all for the uh, maximizing selectivity in parallel reactions uh, for two reactant present. And this one is about maximizing selectivity in series reaction. Okay. If you look at the maximizing selectivity for parallel reaction, it's always dependent on the concentration and temperature. But if we have a series reaction where is A goes to B and then it goes to C and then you want to have B as your desired product, the most important variable here is the tau, which is the residence time distribution and real time for batch reactor. So you need an optimum time so that you can know when you can mice the production of B and thus you need to develop a concentration for file. This is time or tau okay and this is the concentration. Okay. So if you look at this particular reaction this is when the desired product is B, what going to happen is that the reactant A will slowly decrease a long time because it has been consumed. B will go up and reach the peak, which is basically we can call it as T ops time optimum, and then it will go down because C is picking up. So C is slowly growing. And it can reach up to infinity as long as A is still present. Okay, so our idea is basically to get what is the T op here, the middle line here, so it can give you maximum concentration of B. Okay, so what is the most important factor in obtaining the maximum selectivity of the desired product is the residence time distribution. So let's evaluate this, maximizing desired product in series reactions. We're going to do this in the class, and I think that's all for the second lecture. Uh, I will give some example after.